So I am Jamie Noble. I am the Director of Community Relations and Events for the Highlands Ranch Community Association and the Cultural Affairs Association. And what we're gonna talk a little bit about tonight is the Cultural Affairs Association. It was, let me go right to it and find this, so I can get this going. Oh, that's me. And the other person you will meet in just a minute is my partner in crime, Sarah Walla. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about art. We're going to talk about what it means to Highlands Ranch, what it means to us. Our, our, um, everybody knows, I hope you know about the SCFD. They give a percentage of every penny and every dollar that goes right back into a plethora of community organizations that support art and science and theater and dance and you name it, and history. Obviously the Historical Society is, gets funds from that. So it is a huge, huge organization and makes a tremendous difference in funding programs for us in Highlands Ridge. So, and it, we do have a cultural facility, a CFD, and then it is all run through the Douglas County Cultural Council. And there is a committee that will actually go in and say, okay, so we have, this many dollars, it goes to Douglas County of all these funds, they go through and they portion that out based on the organization. We all have to fill out a grant that's quite extensive and talk about the programs that we are going to present and how that's gonna work. And, and we basically ask them for funding to make it happen. It is a wonderful, wonderful program. And we're very, very unique. We are the only state in the nation, actually, I think we're the only Yes, we are the only state in the nation that has a program like this. So it's, um, it's pretty amazing. So way back in 2001, the Highlands Ranch Cultural Affairs Association was created with the intention of bringing arts and culture to our community. Uh, we focus primarily on Highlands Ranch, but we also share information and programs with everyone in Douglas County. So, we decided many, many years ago that we wanted to present a lot of really cool programs. You know, why would you have to go down to the DCA to see the ballet? Why would you have to go see a Broadway show? Why would you have to go see some of these really high programs when you can, we can present some of those maybe in a little bit of a micro environment um, or right here in your backyard for a, a much kindler fee than you would have to go downstairs, go downtown. So we started with programs inside. Now we've gone and we've taken it outdoors. So there are outdoor, there's art, or art everywhere. And you're gonna find that as we go through this presentation. Some of it that we are responsible for, some of it the Metro Districts is, the library. It's just, it's just everywhere, the mansion at our rec center. So we'll go through a little bit of that. I talked briefly about this, so we call it the CAA. Uh, Sarah Walla, you're, who is up there on the screen with the door behind her, you'll talk to her in a minute. We basically run and manage this program. Um, even though we do 44, 45 different programs a year, that as I said, could be a, could be a ballet, could be a, a, um, a, a concert in the park, could be a bunch of different things. We just think it's important to have these things in our community and and so we get out and we work with other organizations that are funded through the SCFD to try and bring unique and different things to the ranch. Um, so you saw that 91, formed in 91. We actually do more than 30 events because we partner with so many different organizations. We normally have a, a summer concert series uh, that will be a little different this year because we're not going to do those huge events quite yet. We do a Car show, who knew that that was a, was a cultural event? It is because it's the history of the automobile and all the different reiterations that that car has gone through. You see the different organizations. We partner with Denver Pops, Upper Colorado, Colorado Ballet. We just did a program two weeks ago with the Colorado Symphony, a virtual event, and it was just fantastic. Then we also take it down a level two at the HRCA, we have four rec centers. We have thousands of different programs, but we do a lot in, with our youth because we know that's where it all starts. If they get interested in art, hopefully they will embrace it and it will be something that they will love and cherish for, for the rest of their lives. So we, um, we, give, we get funding for their art programs, cooking, their dance and drama, everything that you can imagine, we try and help encourage those kids to get involved with. 
sculpting and painting, music and pottery. And then we have down or in the Highlands Ranch, many of you might live here or you've been here. We have this jewel in Highlands Ranch that's called the Backcountry Wilderness Area. It's 8,200 acres wilderness area. And it is kind of a little secret that is um, an opportunity for us to get kids because in our world now, kids don't really know what the great outdoors are when, when they live in a suburban community like this. So in our backcountry, we take them on horse ridges, teach them how to ride a horse, take care of a horse and do camping projects and park projects and learn how to take care of chickens and hang out with donkeys. It gives an awful lot of fun. And they do hikes and trail walks where they will actually learn, oh gosh, what is that flower? Oh, well, wait, that's the Colorado State flower. So things that you wouldn't normally see other than reading it in a book. So that makes it kind of exciting for us. So I'm gonna let Sarah take this over, but this is one of the different ways that we talk about art in our community. So let me introduce Sarah Walla. Hey everybody, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Uh, this is one of Jamie's and my favorite topics to talk about the Cultural Affairs Association and art in our community. And this is a newer program for us that we started in 2018. So we saw a way that we could take those ugly utility boxes that you see all over the community and wrap them. So when this program started, we worked with a group called Arts Street that actually has programs for um, youth, in throughout the Denver metro area and they can do different things. So we worked with them to create art for the first boxes that we did, which are the three that are on the screen right now. So all of the students submitted their designs and then we selected the top three and those students actually got their art on the utility boxes. So that's very exciting for them and a program we hope to do sometime again in the future. It's been a little difficult in terms of timing and then COVID aside. Um, you know, to make that happen. So we, this was the first round and we also had to work with Douglas County and the Highlands Ranch Metro District because they manage the utility boxes. So as you can imagine, they were a little reluctant this on. They didn't want to have to do anything that would make them do maintenance on the boxes, but they were very, very supportive. And we are all very excited to just see how exciting the program has been and how it's beautified our community. So this is round two in front of you now. And so we had our designer design the box on the left with the beautiful sunflowers. And then we had, we found the picture with the deer on the right. So this is the second phase. And we actually, we have a third phase all ready to go with these art utility boxes. So um, we just need to, one of the hard things that happened to COVID is I'm sure you're all aware, many small businesses went out of business. So the company that did the wraps has gone out of business unfortunately again. So they've approved the wraps for the new boxes, but we're just working on finding the company to do it. So we're planning for that to happen sometime this year. So that should be great to see. And Jamie, if you want to go to the next one, right here are the locations of all of the boxes that we currently have in Highlands Ranch. So if you haven't seen them, then I think um, Nancy said everybody would get a copy of the presentation if they want it. So you can take this list and definitely go around and check them out and see what they look like because they're just a fun addition to the community. And we think that it really does a lot to beautify those ugly utility boxes. Now we're getting requests from other companies on or from other communities on how we did this program so that they can replicate it in their their own neighborhood. So that's very exciting as well. All right, if you want to go to the next one. So the biggest art program that we do in Highlands Ranch is called Art Encounters, which you may or may not have heard of before. But this was a program that was started in 2008. And so Jamie was actually a part of the formation of Art Encounters, which is very exciting and something to be proud of, because this is another program that's looked at by other communities across the country. It, brings together all of the different jurisdictions within Douglas County. It's country and Roxborough. And so together we collectively call artists and have them submit their art. And then we select art and it's displayed in our community over the next year. 
So this happens in the spring of every year and we've already gone through the process. We've selected the art for this next year and it will be when May comes around, when the snow finally stops falling and we can you know, get outside, we'll be taking all of the art that's currently there and replacing it with new art. So we try to do a lot of public awareness throughout the year to get people to go out and look at it. We have lots of different um, aspects of the program I'll talk about a little bit more, but um, I also one other thing, when the program started, it had 14 sculptures and it has grown quite a bit. And now Highlands Ranch itself has nine sculptures in a year. It, each of the different jurisdictions, it depends how many pieces of art we can take in a year, but the program has grown quite a bit. So a big part of Art Encounters uh, happens in October when we celebrate National Arts and Humanities Month. And so this is a time when we really promote the art and getting out and look at it. And a couple of ways we do that are we have a judges award for our Art Encounters program. So we find a judge who is well versed in art and they go around and they look at all of the different sculptures that are in place and then they select their best one and that person, um, that artist gets a cash prize. And then we also have a People's Choice Award. So all, as soon as we get the art in, we'll start promoting that. And there at the website at the bottom of that screen, you can go there and you can um, vote for your favorite art and that artist will also get a cash prize and we end that voting in October. One other aspect of Art Encounters that is truly unique for our area, I think, is that we have AutoCast, which is an app on your phone. So each year we go and we have all of the artists record a little something about their piece and talking about their inspiration and why they use certain pieces. So if you download this app on your phone, when you are at the park or you're at the rec center or wherever you're at, you can take a look or you can click on it and you can actually hear the artist talking about their sculpture, which is really amazing. It really lets the community connect and engage with the art. So we're very proud to have that a part of it. I'm not aware of any other programs in Colorado that use AutoCast right now. So it's just it, another great way. Yeah, I just, I want to really, really reemphasize that because that is something that really is unique because very often, you know, when you go to the, to the museum, you see the nice little plaque. Well, it's like when you put those headphones on and it is the artist talking about it. And it, it you know, every artist is all about interpretation. What brings you joy? What makes you happy? How do you, how do you, you know, I really dig this about this. Well, when you hear that actual artist saying, you know, well, and I painted it, it this color because of this, and I sculpted it this way, and here's what that meant. It was all about the heart. I mean, it is really cool to be able to really hear that and hear their perspective. And, and um, it's it's interesting to compare your your perspective of what they're doing. So I, I and you know what's cool is that AutoCast, if you go to other communities, like if you go to Boston, and you pop up your AutoCast, it's going to tell you where the museums are, where all those historic libraries are, all those kinds of things. So it's much broader than us. But for us, it's, it's super cool because when you go outside of a community and you see that piece of art, you can look at it and hear it. And it's just, it's super cool. I encourage you to look that up. Yes, and Judith just corrected me. I guess Colorado Springs does use the AutoCast too. So we aren't quite as uh, you know unique as I thought, but I, it still is a great addition to our program. And a, uh, like we said, just a way to connect with the art, which is really what the purpose is because it's just different when you're able to hear the inspiration and things like that. So Art Encounters 2021, like I mentioned, is coming to a close. We have selected the new art. So this year we had nine sculptures located in outdoor public places. And I'm gonna briefly take you through that. And that is one other component of the program is that the art is all outdoors. We don't have any of the Art Encounters art that is currently indoors. So this was one thing that we were very excited to do even with COVID. I mean, we were fortunate that we worked all of the artists we had selected, it was kind of funny, but we selected art. It was our last meeting we had before everything shut down. We had the committee get together and we chose our art for the next year and toilet paper was already flying off the shelves. And then right after that, everything shut down. So I 
say that we are very, very lucky that the artists were all able to still get us their art and we were able to install it through the spring. It did get delayed a little bit because we weren't able to do anything until June. But, um, and some of the artists come from different states. So it's not just local artists. I mean, they're seen from everywhere. This right in front of you, Angelica, if you haven't seen it, it's at Southridge Recreation Center. This is one that the artist lives in Illinois. So we love this piece and we're gonna be sad to see it go. And if you wanna go to the next one, so this one, Doppelganger Sentinels, is actually the same artist, which occasionally does happen. We have artists submit multiple, multiple works, but this one's at the Douglas County substation, and the Douglas County Sheriff entered the Art Encounters program this year for the first time. So they wanted a way that the sheriffs could connect with the community and, you know, just really have the public enjoy, you know, this aspect of working with the police department and not uh, always have it in a negative light. But something very special to us about this piece is the little badges you see on them. The artist made them for Zachary Parrish, the police officer who was killed a few years ago on New Year's Eve. So um, that was a very special thing for us to be able to do and especially for this to be their first art piece. We, we appreciate. Can we go to the next one? So Fiddlesticks is at the East Ridge Recreation Center. And if you haven't seen it, don't worry because we actually purchased this piece. So we're excited to add Fiddlesticks to our permanent collection. Um, you know, we worked with the artist, and I'll say he made us an offer we couldn't refuse, but this is a fun one. And so this will be moving over to Southridge in the next few months, but this is going to become a permanent part of our community. Next one. Great Blue is at Town Center South, which is um, a very popular location for us because it's busy in the summer we have the farmers market going on so this is always a great place for the artists to be able to display their art and we have loved this little bird. Happy Idiot is at Town Center and it we like all different kinds of art we, you know we as you can see just from what we've looked at we try to really art is a subjective thing and some people like things and some people don't but we try to get art that appeals to all of them this one's grown on me over the year and i'm actually going to be sad to see him go next one kingmaker so we also work with the douglas county library and so kingmaker has been there for the past year and it's been a fun one the library is a great partner of ours and we're lucky to have them stick with the program Fatigue Kulur is at Northridge Recreation Center, which we just started displaying art there two years ago. And it's right off Broadway, so very visible from the streets. So another great location for us just to have art seen by the community. Let's Play is at Town Center North, which is over by the Target. Um, if you're familiar with where that is, there's some restaurants in the area. And so this one's just a fun little piece that people can see. We like how the blue color can kind of pop in the parking lot and stand out a little bit. And Only God Knows, another piece in Town Center Park. Something that's important to us too is that one, the art selected in Art Encounters can weather as we can see today, you know, you can go from 70s one day to a snowstorm the next, so they have to be able to withstand tough weather, but also, um, you know, people, because we don't want anything that can injure people or be damaged or anything like that. And so that just leads me to we're getting ready for the new Art Encounters program. I would say that an interesting thing we came across this year is that we didn't have as many art pieces to select from. It sounds like there were quite a few commission pieces from artists last year. Some art programs across the country kept the art that they had for another year. So we had fewer submissions this year than we had in the past years, but we're still lucky we're going to have we're not quite sure yet, uh, seven to eight pieces in Highlands Ranch next year. So look for those to be coming soon in June. And we typically put out an announcement with it through all of our HRCA um, channels. So the good news is you still have a little bit of time. I'll say probably about four weeks before the art really starts to come out. So make sure you get out and you can experience it in person. And then a few weeks after that, you'll be able to see the new art. So I want to tell you a little bit about, um, we, we've been so fortunate because our founding fathers in the Highlands Ranch, now we're only 40 years old, but 
we've had some incredibly smart people that have tried to make this the best community we could possibly make it. As I said, our goal is to make it everything accessible, make it fun, make it cultural, make it exciting, give you a lot of different opportunities. So when we see some of these pieces that come by, we get such positive responses from our community that say, oh my gosh, that's one of my favorites. You just have to buy that. So through the Cultural Affairs Association, we have been fortunate enough to purchase some of these different, different sculptures. This one is actually the heaviest sculpture in America, maybe except next to Larry's, but <laughs> these are three um, Basset Hounds. And this sits right now at our East Recreation Center. And we have a, a child care wing. And if you can imagine little kids, it's a, they're a little worn off here because the kids come and love and hug and, and they are they are just precious. And it brings a smile to your face every time you come in the building. But we purchased that, oh my gosh, I don't even know how long ago, but it was a wonderful purchase. This one is really one of my favorites. It's this incredible piece of marble that is super smooth. He sits here at Eastridge as well. And he was actually gifted to us by the artists. So we're really, really happy to have it. This would be one that we did have outside, but when you're outside, we worry about smaller pieces. So he's very happy in the lobby here at, at Eastridge. This is another one that, you know, Sarah said the visibility and, and bringing that joy out when you come into a place or, or drive up to a facility. This one, Tigris, is, is um, just a very fun and wonderful sculpture to see when you drive up to East. Sounds like East is kind of the art hog, and we kind of are. We have a lot of pieces at East Ridge. Um, this one was the first one that we purchased. This is Enchantment. She's another bronze. and. She is just, she sits out in front of the North Trek Center and is just so delightful and beautiful. And she's got a little tray for birds there. And so very often you'll see kids put little pebbles in there or sometimes sunflowers, seeds. And it's just a, it's a wonderful addition to our collection. And then I wanna talk about this one. I told you we've had some incredible people that have given us gifts through our community, through history, through education, through encouraging us to step out of the box. And us. But let's do fun cultural things. Let's make it exciting. So um, Larry Perkins, who I saw on the call a minute ago, when we opened our Westridge Recreation Center, he, we, we actually contracted Larry to do this piece. He'll talk about it on the video here in a sec. But it is a incredible, beautiful bronze that sits out in front of our West Trekton. Now, if you will hang with me a second, I am going to get a, you all know that that's, a, a, well, Larry's going to tell you right out of the museum. I think he's going to tell you this story. So hang with me a minute. This is the black, obviously, that talks about when it was placed 2003. So I'm going to try, I, I think I have to stop sharing my screen. So hang on one sec. And I think I will have, if we're all lucky and I have coaches, I might be able to do this. Hold on. Oh, see, there's Larry, but I can't see him. So hold on a sec. There's Larry. Can you all hear that? No, you got to reshare your screen, Jamie. Okay. Hang on one sec. Oh. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, you hate it when you're um, not as smart as the computer. So hang with me. It's, it's all right, by the time we take the show on the road, you'll be an expert. I hope so. Okay, can you see that video of Larry? Yes. All right, now tell me, if just give me a thumbs up if you can hear him. What is talking, Cha? Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Larry Perkins, and um, I'm a sculptor, and I made this piece called Taquincha some years ago. Everyone says, well, what is Taquincha? It's the Arapaho Cheyenne word for little pale deer. 
But this is not a deer. It's a North American pronghorn. It's also not an antelope, but that's what everyone calls it. The North American pronghorns are native to North America, and they are not found anywhere else in the world. So they're unique to our region. In Wyoming, they're so plentiful that people think of them as pests almost. But they are uh, endangered in some areas, and a flock of them, or a herd of them, used to live right here in this area. So a few years ago, we had a conversation. Gary Debus was the uh, general manager of HRCA at the time, and we talked about putting a sculpture of a pronghorn someplace to memorialize the presence of the herd long ago when they lived here and the Indians lived in this region as well and of course hunted them. So one thing led to another and we ended up with this piece with its Indian name and it uh, has been here since uh, 2003. So uh, it's a cast bronze, and it will be here until, who knows? It might be here 5,000 years. It might be here after all of those people are gone. I don't know. But in any case, a pronghorn is not as large as this piece. It's um, about 20% smaller than this. But if we wanted a commanding presence of a sculpture here, we would have had to put a life-size one on a pedestal. And instead we decided to let it be at ground level so people can commune with it if they want to. And as a consequence, it's an enlarged piece, but it's pretty close to the real thing. The pronghorn is a an unusual creature. Uh, it has horns, but it does shed part of those horns. Antelopes do not shed their horns. Uh, deer and other animals with antlers shed their antlers completely. The pronghorn is somewhere in between. Uh, it has small very, very strong limbs. And the interesting part of this is that the antelope evolved with cheetahs on the North American continent. The cheetahs are gone, but the pronghorns have survived. After about the first hundred yards, this animal can outrun a cheetah which is supposed to be the fastest animal on the planet. But these guys can run all day. They can outrun a jeep in, in rough territory. And their legs are designed not to break if they happen to trip in a, in a prairie dog hole. So these guys take off and processing a huge amount of wind through a big windpipe, they just run. But they cannot jump a fence. I'll wait for those motorcycles to go by. Pronghorns go underneath the fences. So in areas where the farmers and ranchers are aware of this, they put the bottom strand of the fence up a little higher above the ground. The pronghorns spread their front legs and scoot under the fence. Because the pronghorns who lived around here got encroached on by the development of the housing developments, the herd migrated through areas that weren't fenced and moved down the Santa Fe area, moved all the way around and ended up in the area around the Sky Ridge Hospital over on I-25. If you keep your eye open when you're driving down I-25, sometimes you can see them uh, looking at you. 
with this faraway gaze that they seem to have. The pronghorn has very, very, very sharp eyesight and can spot you before you spot him. And that's one of the things that intrigues people when they stop by the roadside and look at a herd of these guys that are so far away that the animals are tiny, but they're looking at you. And that's because of this incredible eye. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute. See if I'm smart enough, but look how cool is this. I have the maquette of that. This is the miniature that, that the artist does as the test run, really. I'm sure there's a more eloquent way to say that, Larry. But it is a, it's a real bronze, and I am lucky to have that in my office. So we're um, super excited to be able to, let me see if I can get out of this and go to my other um, presentation. So again, I talked about these people that are so amazing that have influenced our community. And Larry Perkins, who is on this call, is one of those people. He is an artist extraordinaire. He is one of the neatest people you'll ever want to meet. He has his brand. I mean, would you have ever known that much about and that, that little Tequincha? Never. That's like Larry just did a live autocast. So now you know. So <clears throat> we appreciate Larry more than you can ever know. He uh, has a very rich history and is quite an uh, excellent sculptor. So um, thank you, Larry. Thank you for being on the call. We love you and we appreciate you. So now I wanted to tell you about another gal. We're gonna go into a different kind of art. We're out of our art encounters and out of sculptures <clears throat> for many years. And, and Larry talked about Gary Debus, who was the general manager when I got here. And we had just started doing some prints. We had an arts festival that we did in our little town center. So we would do these incredible prints. And so I want to show you a little video. And I'm sorry, it's I'm just I'll get it here. Um, from Mary Elliott, who was the original one who did these incredible paintings for us. And then we turned them into art prints for our um, our arts festival. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, I'm gonna hold on. There she is. All right. Can you see Mary there? And um, this. In 2005, Jamie Noble and I started talking about the growth of Hounds Ranch and different things um, that were coming up in our community. And um, this clock tower became something that we decided we would focus on. So um, in 2005, I painted the um, town center and um, the, this scene in the summer. I painted it in watercolor. And it was um, just, uh, I think I photographed it many times and would go out and sketch it. And um, people that were passing by would kind of stop and watch. But, um, but I was, um, I really just enjoyed the lighting in this particular piece and um, the significance in, for our community and the growth of our community in this piece. Um, also in this piece, the, Every poster, I would do the paintings and then HRCA would take the um, paintings and then have a graphic artist put it into a form for the poster. And so I don't recall the, the person that worked on this one, but um, every year we would have a graphic artist put it together with um, the poster for a visually pleasing piece. Um, so it was another one of the the fun ones that represented the growth of Highlands Ranch. Well, and as we mentioned before, you've done the um, windmill, which is still the iconic, but now this is like the secondary main uh, uh, visual that people think of Highlands Ranch, the clock tower. Yes. And I, I do think this is a, a it, it, this is definitely a different poster, just with the colors, the way that Highlands Ranch Art Festival up there. So you can you can tell there's some growth in Highlands Ranch here. It's, we all are testament to. Right. And it has a different look than some of the other ones. Um, some of them were historical, 
and um, some are this kind of represents sort of a fresh approach and the fresh um, new things that were going on at the time. So that um, <clears throat> again, Mary Elliott was or is an incredible artist, and we were so fortunate. She lived here in Highlands Ranch for many, many years. So I want to show you some of the different things that she and I did. And like she said, we would go through and Highlands Ranch was growing all this time. And, and so we would try and find something that about the community that we thought was really amazing. So let me see if I can go back to my screen and share that again. No, nope, I don't want that. Sorry, hang with me. I'm going to scoot ahead. Ah, see, I can do this. All right. Now here, I'm just gonna show you some of the prints that Mary did. Again, this is a, an incredible artist and these posters, many of these prints we still have and they are available for sale. Um, so again, this was the windmill that, that is, stands behind the mansion, the original windmill. Amazing. Now, did she add those mountains in there? Yes, she did because guess what? She can, she's the artist. So it was really, it was just wonderful. This was out in our back country when the back country was, was given to the Highlands Ranch Community Association by Shea Holmes. It was, Mary is just, her color was just wonderful. So she popped out these, she'd go out and take a picture. And then she would come up with these incredible posters that she sold every year that we did the arts fair. So, I mean, who knew that? This one on the right side is called Rock and Tree. I know, not, not too clever, but it was such a beautiful, the way the sun was hitting it, it was just remarkable. And there's, there's Tequincha in its natural environment. And when remember when we were doing these way back in the early 2000s, there wasn't as much growth. So these were all over the plains of Highlands Ranch. And it was amazing to see them in action. Again, just some special features that are in our back country, some of the trail rides. Um, the barns at the Highlands Ranch Mansion, you don't very often get to see that view. The pictures here are a little pixelated, and I'm sorry about that, but um, of course we did a lot around the mansion. I have many, many prints that um, we focused on the mansion because really it is the historic piece of Highlands Ranch. And again, the windmill from a different view. There's the one that Mary was referencing. This was the year the town center opened, so we wanted to recognize that huge bit of growth. And now, guess what? I get to turn it over to Nancy, who is going to talk about art in different ways through buildings and other things. Sound good? So, yep, yep. Thank you, thank you, Jamie. And so, um, it's not just the all these beautiful sculptures and all that we've seen. But when we started looking at art, it was like, it was just popping up everywhere. And when I actually counted how many um, things that we're presenting here tonight, it's, it's something like 50 different, um, 50 different locations or different art pieces in Highlands Ranch. So I consider this to be a work of art. This is in the mansion itself. This is the, um, uh, the bathrooms, the Mr. Bathroom, the, the master's bathroom. And you can see some um, uh, original painting that was done. And this was during uh, Kistler's, Frank Kistler's time at the mansion. It was during his time in the, um, the late, what was it like 1929 to 1930 when he was doing just a massive renovation. And uh, so this was part of his renovation uh, next. And so then he, he didn't just do it in the male bathroom, in the master's bathroom, but he also put it in the mistress's bathroom. So the uh, room on the, on the left there is the uh, big bathroom for the mistress of the house. And uh, it's not really being captured here very well in my pictures, but, but um, when you go there to the mansion, you'll notice that you've got the, it's like a pretty power, powder blue painting of uh, flowers and, and plants and all that's on the walls. and on the cabinet doors and, and it's really just lovely. Not only is there painting on the walls of the bathroom, uh, but there's a lot of pictures in the mansion and I, I don't think most of them are original or historical, but this is one. This is in the upstairs west bedroom 
Uh, and this is Joan Phipps, one of the daughters of Lawrence Phipps. There was actually three daughters and they had three of these portraits done. And I've seen the other one that Mary Phipps um, Young uh, had done. She's the, the Young House is the one that we also call the, the Chum How House. Now we're calling it the Young House or the Young Chum How House. I love that name. Um, and they actually, the, the portraits looked really, really similar. So next time you go to the mansion and you're in, upstairs in the west bedroom, take a, take a look at that beautiful portrait. And then next, and while you're in that west bedroom, then go on into the bathroom. And there in uh, that bathroom, we call it the Oriental bathroom. And that one is just really, really spectacular with the paintings that are on the, uh, on the walls. Here you see the, like the Oriental crane uh, that's in the, in the tub area. And also over there on the other side, you've got uh, just, I'll, I'll, you know, that, that really pretty um, uh, oriental style, the, the red and the golds and the black. So it's, uh, it, it's really very, very striking. I hear that uh, they've even had parties there in the oriental bathroom. It was so special. Next. Now we're moving on to a totally different area. And this is um, in the sheriff's substation. And um, this is not outside on public display, but it's inside on public display. And as soon as you go into the sheriff's substation, just go down the little hallway and then look to your left. And there's another hallway to your left. And uh, all lining the, the hallway are probably 20 or 30 of these framed art pieces. And they were done by school children, all elementary school children. And it's on public display and apparently permanent display. So this one here was done by Brianna. And here's one from Cougar Run Elementary School, Taylor and Kendall from Ranch View Middle. So they're just really, really fun and neat. And of course, we, we always have to have more um, Highlands Ranch Mansion windmill, so they're they're just everywhere. It's really a fun place to go. So uh, don't uh, you know? You go ahead and go into the sheriff's station. They'll let you out. This is one of my favorite places in Highlands Ranch, and this is in the town center north area. And these are gorillas. And you're probably saying, "What the heck are gorillas doing in Highlands Ranch?" That's a good question. There's no. Um, connection with anything other than apparently uh, when it was being planned by Shay Holmes, Shay uh, decided that gorillas have uh, are fun and they have presence, and so they put gorillas there. And they're all the same kind of. I guess they're concrete sculptures. These three gorillas that are that you see there lined up are in kind of like that holding pond that's right next to Lucent, and. When Whenever we do have a lot of rain, that holding pond will fill up. And so you might only see as much of uh, perhaps just the gorilla's uh, uh, chest or their shoulders or their head, um, but uh, then the water will recede and you'll see the whole thing. And then the other gorilla here, the bigger picture of the gorilla is just in the parking lot. So next time you're in Town Center North, go over and hug a gorilla, uh, but be careful, they are dangerous. So we don't recommend uh, feeding them at all. Next. Another place that you might not expect to see art um, is at the golf course. So this is the Highlands Ranch Golf Club. This is owned by um, DU and it's the home of the Denver Pioneers. And so right out in front of the golf club, you will see next, this beautiful bronze sculpture of an eagle. It's a, it is a stainless steel uh, round um, circle there and then the eagle is attached to the stainless steel so this is a bronze on stainless steel and um, you can get right up close and personal and I've I've been there several different times trying to get him in just the right light and with the sun at just the right angle and I don't think I'm ever gonna um, give up my day job and, and try to become a professional photographer because I probably wouldn't make it but I did the best I can, could. So next time you're over there, just go on up, walk right up to it, and you, you can really see the amazing detail on his feathers and, uh, and then on the, on the backside. So the name of this sculpture is Eagle Against the Sun by Chris Navarro. And now, yes, go next. 
And this is like a little uh, saying there. It says, eagle, spread your wings wide and rise, catch the wind and soar to your kingdom in the sky, circling the air between heaven and earth, knowing the freedom to soar against the sun. So that's what that picture is supposed to show. He's, he's free and he's soaring against the sun. And this is a picture of him on the backside. And look at that really great detail of his wings and his feet. You can even see like the little lines on his feet. They kind of look like chicken feet. If you ever buy chicken feet for your chicken soup, that's just what the chicken feet look like, only they're kind of like an ugly red, yellowish color. The, the, this guy looks much better. So eagle against the sun. And then it seems like we have a lot of birds in Highlands Ranch. And this is called, um, well, this is a picture of an, uh, of an eagle. And I found this one in Northridge. And Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think I've seen this in other rec centers too. Do you, do you have a lot of these little golden eagles all over? We have two of them. There's one at Eastridge as well. Oh, okay. So one at Eastridge, one at Northridge. Um, but notice the, the, the eagle that's on the sign there where it says Highlands Ranch and then the two that are on the left or the right hand side. The top one that's kind of yellowish greenish, that was the original eagle that was um, drawn by or created by the uh, Kathy Brock and Associates, the marketing firm that was hired by Mission Viejo. And so they are the ones that started it and they were trying to come up with a like a logo or a symbol for Highlands Ranch. And they were, you know, run, throwing out a bunch of different um, animals, I guess, or whatever to, uh, you know, what would be a good symbol for Highlands Ranch. And she said, Kathy had said that they thought about the cow, since after all, this was a cattle ranch, but somehow it just, it didn't seem strong enough. It didn't seem like a, a dynamic creature that they wanted to portray as the, you know, the, the new dynamic community of Highlands Ranch. So they came up with a bird and it was a conglomeration of eagle and falcon and owl. Um, and she said there was just, they just wanted a strong bird. And so she, they called it the epic bird. Uh, a few years later then, um, uh, you see the bird down below and that's the current bird now that's on all of the symbols and, and that's more like an eagle-like. So that's our one of our official symbols of Highlands Ranch. Next, and so here you see again another depiction of it. Um, Jamie, go ahead. Uh, so, you see, you, so you see the eagle everywhere. Then there's so many different kinds of art. Here we've looked at sculptures with the art encounters and, and painting on, on uh, indoors and, um, and eagles and things like that. And I was thinking, well, there's also landscape and garden art. And we have um, three nice examples of that. One of them is Civic Green Park. And this is just a, a depiction of the, uh, the entrance uh, to Civic Green Park, and that certainly is looks artful to me. And let's and the other places are Central Park and Marion's Garden, and we'll look at pictures of them. I know this isn't quite clear, but it's the best I, I had. And so this is just kind of showing that when they laid out Civic Green Park, and apparently this was also, I guess, part of Metro and Shea. And so there's a very definite pattern, and you can kind of see the nice angles and um, uh, straight aways and angles then. So just the, um, the, the landscape itself, I think is, is very artful. And next, and then right off to the right side, when you go in from the main entrance, you come to the board of directors garden. And in the board of directors garden, there's just uh, some nice lists of some of the different directors of Metro District. I, I think the criteria is they had to serve for at least five years, if I'm, if I'm remembering right. So this is one of the sculptures there that greets you right near the entrance. And it's, it's, it doesn't have a title. The title is Untitled, um, which I guess is a title in and of itself. So the sculptor is David Hahn, who was an attorney. And um, here, anyway, it tells all about him. Uh, and so he, he drew this beautiful, uh, I think it's a piece of marble called Untitled there. Next. And here's just an example of uh, the big 
uh, pieces of rock and where they have placed the names of some of the, the board of directors. And again, I believe their criteria is they had to serve for at least something like five years or so. So quite a few of them on there. And then right near uh, these big rocks with the director's names is this beautiful sculpt, uh, sculpture. Uh, and that's the bird on the right that you see. And the sculptor is Rick Sargent. And Rick was commissioned to do a sculpture uh, for Metro District. Next. And so um, I, I had a really hard time trying to get a, a good picture of this one as well, because he's way up high. It's on like that rock that you see is like a six foot rock. And so I'm not quite six feet. So trying to get my hands up and the camera and the right lighting and all, but I, I think I finally captured it. And it really is another beautiful bronze sculpture of, of a bird. In this case, it is a falcon. And the plant that's behind it is the Indian paintbrush. And if you look uh, down there at the Highlands Ranch Metro District logo, logo, it looks remarkably like an Indian paintbrush. And I did speak with Rick about a week or two ago and asked him what his, um, you know, how he came up with this design. And, and it seems like everybody likes birds for, for what they symbolize. And, and he said he did look at the logos in Highlands Ranch. So he probably was seeing that other epic bird. And then he also saw the uh, Indian paintbrush of the logo of Metro District. So he put together this beautiful bronze. It is not, it does not have a title, but uh, Rick was saying that in his uh, estimation, it should just be entitled Honoring the Community of Highlands Ranch. So we'll just call it that. Next. Staying there in Civic Green Park, there was just so much, there's so many neat things to do here. And, and I'm actually thinking that maybe next month in May or June, we're going to do a, a tour of Civic Green Park and perhaps Town Center because there's just a lot that you that you don't see. And I've been in the park many, 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 many times. But when you actually start paying attention and kind of um, purposefully going around and looking at some of the things, I just thought it was fascinating. So this is one of the very interesting things was the reflexology path. And when you look down specifically at those rocks, um, that are placed there on that reflexology path. They're in circles and they're, they're kind of like flowing like water. There's also one of them at the Denver Botanic Gardens. And I understand you're supposed to take your shoes off and walk on that barefoot and go ahead. I've tried it and it hurts. I think you have it to does really, hurt. It does hurt, yeah. <laughs> You really have to like build up to it. But uh, anyway, next time you're there in Civic Green Park, take your shoes off and try walking on it. I think I got two steps and I gave up. That was it. <laughs> so if you keep on going down that path, just a little bit away from that, you come to the soundstone. And this is really neat. Um, you, If you stand up uh, there onto that uh, little base there and you stick your head in that hole, now, I don't really know if that's a smart thing to do during COVID time, but I, I didn't see any little COVIDs running around in there. But you're supposed to stick your head in that hole and you really have to get it in kind of far. And then you, at least what I did, I went, oh, oh. And it just kind of reverberates all around you. Anyway, I thought it was fun. So that's our little soundstone. Next. Also in Civic Green Park, you see the, um, or Civ what is it, Civic Green Civic Center, you see several of these finger labyrinths and they're placed next to uh, benches. So you can just have a seat on the bench and then put your little hand down there and let your fingers start to, you know, trying to go through the labyrinth until you can find the beginning or the end or you come out in the middle or wherever, there's actually five of them. And they, then they're fun. It really is fun to just kind of let your fingers go, you know, wandering. And I think that's the idea is you don't, you don't really have to think a lot, just, you know, let your mind wander free and, and, and let your fingers do the walking. Next. So here's just an example of two more of those finger labyrinths. I actually was able to do these in like under 50 minutes. No, really, I did them a little quicker than that, but they're fun to do. So next time you're there, just 
Go ahead and do them. Next. And then continuing on in that same general area as the Civic, uh, Civic Center, Civic Green Park, you come to the Veterans Monument, the Veterans Memorial. And there's this beautiful bronze sculpture. It's the eagle on the left. And it's not, I didn't do a great job of getting the, getting the right lighting and, and, and all, but I did the best I could. So um, feel free to go there in person and look, you can, you can definitely see that he's a bald eagle. His head is white. And if you look at him closely, you also see that beautiful detail uh, that we saw on the uh, Eagle Against the Sun that was at the Highlands Ranch Golf Club. I spoke to the um, uh, company or the, the, the sculptor's office that did that, uh, did this sculpture, and this was Mike Curtis. And apparently Mike Curtis was, um, I guess, commissioned to do this um, Eagle, and they had it at the uh, opening when the Veterans Memorial Park was opened. And apparently he does, he, according to his website, it says that he is considered the foremost sculptor of bald eagles, uh, which of course is our nation's proud symbol. And it's also very popular at veterans monuments. So not only in ours, but uh, according to his website, I counted it, counted up and there were a total of 16 states where his, um, his eagle is in Veterans Monument. So this is called the Tribute Eagle then, tribute to our armed forces. He's, he's really lovely. Next. Now, continuing kind of in the central part of Highlands Ranch, we come to uh, Central Park. And I thought this was just a really nice example also of some landscape art. And if you, um, when I started out, I was standing up above the park, kind of at the parking lot that's by the Highlands Ranch Hospital and you're looking down on the park. And when you're looking down on it, you have a nice perspective of uh, kind of the circular seating areas, kind of like the little amphitheater there, the circular seating areas and the plantings that go all around it. And then of course, right, uh, rising very dramatically out of the center are, are these, is this metal sculpture, the three sticks, if you will. Next. And at the top of the stick says the, um, it <laughs> looks like you're gonna spear some fish or whatever, but this is actually a communications tower, a radio tower. And so I guess that must have some part of the, part of the communication. So what a clever way to hide what might otherwise have been considered to be an ugly uh, feature of our landscape. Instead, they've turned it into a beautiful work of art. I understand also the light, uh, that there's lights on the top of that. And so at night they can change the lighting and all. I, I, must, be, uh, I must be getting old because I have to admit, I don't think I've been out at night looking at the light shining on anything here lately. So that's, my, that's one of my goals for this summer. Next. Also there in Central Park is this um, area that they call the maze, the Central Park maze. And it says it's been designed for fun, not to be uh, confusion, but this maze is for a brief retreat from one's daily path. And uh, it's modeled after one of the first and most famous mazes in the world at Hampton Court over in England in the UK. So it is, um, of course, it's not nearly on the same scale of it or as whatever, but it's, it's kind of fun. And in order to uh, get the full feature of the maze, you really have to wait till later in the year when you can see all the plants behind it, the, the, that ornamental grass. Right now, I took this, oh, probably two, three months ago and everything was you know, winterized and cut back. But if you, were go, if you were to go there in the summer with a tall maze, it, it might look a little bit more like the hedges there at, at Hampton Court. Next. And, oh, I guess I was there when the, when the grass was taller too, earlier in the year. And kind of in the center of the maze there is the, um, it, there are chimes. And uh, so you see the, the long, tall po uh, poles going up and then Jamie's uh, highlighting the one there that you can take a hold of, grab, and you can start pounding on them and, and making beautiful music. Last time I was there, I was making what I thought was really beautiful music and nobody else seemed to appreciate it. 
course, there was nobody around except a dog or two, but I thought it was beautiful. So next time you're there, pick it up and pick up the, the bongers. And then we go to Marion's garden. Here's another example of, I think, really beautiful landscape art. And this is at the mansion. Uh, the picture of the lady is Marion Morgan, and she was, she and her husband have uh, had lived there at the mansion uh, on the grounds for, I think Marion was there for about 40 years. She's gone now. Uh, she was in the little, uh, one of the little uh, houses right behind there. But in her honor, then they designed, Metro um, designed this really beautiful garden. And this is what it looks like in summer. And it is actually supposed to be um, uh, each individual little section defined by and separated by the walkway. But each little section is supposed to be the petal of a flower. And then this nice sculpture in the center is like the, the pistil and the stamen of the flower. So it all has meaning. So next time you're there in the mansion, go around and look. And here's you kind of see the picture. So you see the flower beds and you can see that they look like little petals of a flower. And that circle in the middle then was that, that, uh, that pistil, that uh, uh, weathered metal uh, sculpture there that's supposed to be the pistil. Next. Oh, another picture of it, kind of a neat picture of the of the pastel. The, another thing that I should have done and I did not include here in my talking about landscape art and, and, and um, buildings as art, I should have included a picture of the mansion because my goodness, what a beautiful art piece I think the mansion is. And so pretend that one of the next pictures here is going to be of the mansion. I, I didn't take a picture of it, but I should have. Next. And so then here is my little section on buildings as art. Um, so up there at the top, we should have put the mansion and then of course other areas. And I don't know um, what a, a, an actual definition of a, a building as art would be, but these were just pretty buildings that I thought, you know, had, had things jutting up and down or, or nice concave surfaces. And one of them is the library. It's just so interesting when you actually step back. We're so used to just walking into the building, but when you just stand back and look at it and you see all these, you know, the circles going one way and the circles going another and the circles from the top. And anyway, I just thought it was, it had a lot of uh, architectural appeal to me. Next. And also at the library, not just the building itself, but um, they used to have some rotating art. Um, this picture here on the on the left was a rotating art exhibit and I happened to the day that I went there I happened to find a friend of the artist and so she was there taking the pictures uh, that day that I was there was going to be the last day for the art exhibit I just recently went back about two or three weeks ago and that room does not have any more in it any more art in it and I'm I'm guessing probably just because of COVID. So hopefully they'll, our rotating art exhibits will come back. And then here on the exterior of the, um, uh, of, the man, of the library, you saw a little Mary's garden. So I don't know if that officially counts as art, but it did in my mind. And it certainly made me think, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Then when you go on inside the library, they actually have several um, displays on the walls. This is one, uh, I thought it was a nice collage art with a, a historical. So there's good old um, uh, Potato Clark and, and Springer and, and Sassy and, and uh, our um, Cheese Ranch guy. So it's just kind of interesting, but also, and I didn't take pictures of them, but there's several different um, areas on the wall where they have some interesting art. So take a peek at them in next. And this is one of them. And I have it on here that it's a rotating collection, but when I went back recently, it was still there. So maybe that's a permanent part of the collection, but it just looks so cute. Next. In addition to, um, to the library and to the uh, South Regional is the uh, Highland Heritage Park. And this is the new pavilion that just uh, was put in, I think, what, last year? It's, uh, there's an amphitheater, there's soccer fields, there's some parking nearby, a little restroom. And um, anyway, it just, it, it, I think it just looks really neat. And it seems like this shape is very common. I've seen it. There's also a, a picnic pavilion cover or a picnic shelter cover in Central Park with that as well. 
Another um, interesting architectural piece is there in Civic Green Park, and this is the Case Pavilion, so the nice arch. And then if you notice in front, it's got uh, the, the green and the sam or white colored, and I think those are fountains, so they can, you know, come bursting up in the summer and the little kids run through them. So altogether, I just, uh, to me, that's very, very artsy-like. And then, of course, the rec centers. Um, here's Southridge. Look at all those angles going everywhere and the nice open spaces. And I think that's really cute. And uh, how can we beat nature's art? And that, of course, is at sunset. Um, I don't typically see what sunrises look like, but I would imagine they look probably really pretty too. But we have just some beautiful colors here in, in Highlands Ranch. And there's another one with our very famous windmill. And that is going to take us to our um, next to the last slide. And that is um, the art in Highlands Ranch scavenger hunt. We think it would be really fun to um, encourage everyone to get out and actually look at these things. And at least for the next month now, the weather hopefully should be getting better after this week. And if you can recall, Sarah, uh, the other Sarah was mentioning that the art encounter uh, the art encounters, those nine sculptures are going away in May, and then there's going to be um, some new ones coming in. So our, uh, we're going to be having what's called our scavenger hunt, and I'm going to ask that if you want to go around, take your time, go around to at least five of the art locations, go to all of them, but as I counted up, there's like 50 of them that we had here on our slide. So just, just a few of them, but definitely get there between now and mid-May before those art encounter pieces go away. And then again, in uh, next, you know, starting in either May or June, then there should be new ones, but for the purposes of our scavenger hunt. So within the next month, get to at least five of the art locations, take a picture of yourself, a selfie of yourself with the art piece in the background so that we know you were really there or have someone take a picture of you and then um, go ahead and uh, email those pictures to me. I also have placed an entry form on the um, uh, website, on our website, the hrhs.org and the entry form just lists. I've, I've organized everything in terms of East Ridge or the East Ridge area, the Central um, Highlands Ranch, the North Ridge area so that when you're in those different areas, you, you'll kind of know what to look for. And I hope you have fun. I, I spent several days just uh, driving around Highlands Ranch, jumping out of the cars, taking pictures, jumping back in. And it was really a very enjoyable um, exploration. So I'm hoping everybody will have fun. And down there we say be eligible to win prizes and HRCA and Jamie has very um, generously uh, donated some of the Mary Elliott posters to us. So what we'll do is we will put um, the, the, the entrance into a big hat and then just draw out three winners and you'll, um, you'll get a beautiful Mary Elliott poster. So I think it should be more than worthwhile. And with that, our final slide is thank you very much for, for listening. If anyone has any questions or anything, we'd be happy to entertain them. And I think DJ is going to unmute everybody. Questions, comments, any additional info uh, or is else that you found that we didn't include in our art program? We'd love to, love to hear about it. If some people can unmute themselves. I'm not going to force unmute anyone. <laughs> okay. This was awesome, Nancy. This was awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is that you, Martha? Was that you, Martha? <laughs> yes, it's me. Sure was. <laughs> well, did, I get awesome. every, did, did I get everything right about the mansion? Yes, you did. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to sign off. Thank you. Nancy, you just did a marvelous job. Oh, thank you, John. Can you think of anything we missed? Oh, no, my goodness. You found things we've never heard of before. <laughs> thank you. Good, good. Thank you. That's what I found when I was going around. I was amazed at all these things that we have. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for attending. Next month, we think it'll be um, kind of an unusual and interesting program. It's going to be on 
uh, first residence and we've got a little video for you again and also then we're going to ask everyone that has any memory so if you've lived in Highlands Ranch you know anything longer than a day or two I'm sure you're going to have some memories or impressions on how it was I know when I first moved to Highlands Ranch I had some very definite impressions and things that I remember um, so we're just going to ask next month for everyone to you know contribute once we open up once we open up the, the microphone so thank you everyone so much and we'll see you next month thank you thanks bye-bye bye. i keep trying to unmute so i can say thanks nancy oh. that was wonderful but my unmute doesn't seem to work did i did it come it, in it's this working time? now we okay. can hear you larry thank you oh, oh oh thank you larry that reminds me um, thank you, everybody. Before you go with Larry and with um, Mary Elliott, we have a much uh, more involved video of Larry and Mary Elliott as well. When we send out the uh, recording of this program, we'll have links to, uh, to Mary Elliott's and I'm hoping to have links to, to Larry. We just did it about what, two, three weeks ago or something like that. So we're working on it. So that might take a little bit longer, but we encourage you to look at him. Mary, Mary goes into every picture she did and you know the meaning that it had for Highlands Ranch and Larry it just knows everything there is to know about uh, pronghorns and then some. So thank you, Mary, or Larry. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. It was a wonderful show. Oh, good. Every bit of it. That must be you, Mary. Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, and Mary is an, is an artist, so I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. All right. So we'll say goodbye to everybody. Bye.